So let's go to another example on vectors. This time we want to know, oops, sorry for that. So this time we want to know how to go from a point A to a point B. Okay, so we want to know how to walk the entire the entire segment A B in T seconds. Okay, so if we have a segment, an oriented segment, that means that we have a vector that goes from A to B, so that's our start, okay? Oops, that was not very good, but the easiest thing I can make is just moving B a little bit upwards, and that solves the problem. Okay, so going from A to B. So this is our vector, I'm going to call it D for difference. So if you want to do this entire path, if you want to move throughout this entire path in T seconds, we need to know how, how much we should move at each frame. Because we want to, know the, when we want to give the impression that we're, we're, we are walking smoothly, but that's not, that's, that's not what's happening, right? At each frame, we're just giving a, a small step that kind of changes the position of, of the point that we're moving, but just by a slight amount, okay? So this gives the impression that an object is, is moving constantly and smoothly because at each frame, we're moving just a tiny bit. And since we know that most games, they tend to run at at least 30 frames per second, that's that's really increases this this trend to give this smooth movement appearance okay so we need to consider that d has a length has a magnitude so we should say that the length of d is of course a number is the distance from a to b and we're going to call it length. So as you know, this represents the size of the vector d or the magnitude of the vector d. So this is basically the distance between a and b. Okay? So I'm going to I'm going to just say dist ab is equal to the size of the vector d and that's equal to length. That's that's how we, we're gonna call it. We're gonna call it length. Okay. So let's let's make a question here. Let's do it in red to really emphasize. If I move length in t seconds, how much? Should I move in a frame? So first of all, we need to know how much is a frame. If you think carefully, a frame is basically the time, this is the current time, minus the time from the last frame that I'm going to call it time prime. So if I subtract the current time minus the time from the last frame, I'm going to have how long a frame takes to be rendered because this is not something that happens out of the blue. It has kind of a a time that it you know takes to to render everything that's in your scene and you can measure the size by divided one by maybe 30 because if we have a game that runs at 30 frames per second that means uh, a frame is is going to be rendered at each one over 30 seconds okay so in unity we have um if a, a variable a property that tells us how much the last frame took to be rendered and this property in unity this is called the delta time 
delta just because it's a variation, it's a subtraction between two points, and time it's because it's actually referring to time, so the delta of the time, the time it took to render one frame, okay? So now we can just write a simple rule here, that's a basic proportion rule, what we call a rule of three, because we have three known variables and we have one that's unknown and we want to therefore know this variable. So if, if we can traverse length in t seconds, in delta time seconds, how much will we traverse? So we're gonna we're gonna just cross multiplicate this, and we're gonna have that. I'm just gonna call it this x because this it's that's an unknown. An interrogation mark is not very clear. So x times I'm gonna remove this. This this is just a word. I'm gonna leave it as t. X times t is gonna be equal to length times delta time. So we clearly have that x is equal to length times delta time divided by t. Okay, so clearly x is a value. How am I supposed to move by a value? I need to move by a vector. And we know, and we already know the direction we want to want to traverse. The direction is given by this vector d. That's the difference between b and a. Okay, so there must be a relationship between x and d in order to make our object move from a to b in t seconds. And of course, there is. If I take uh, d prime and that's going to be our vector d divided by the length of our vector d and that's basically the unit vector of d this is probably going to look something like this okay this is the unit vector this is d prime and the size of d prime is equal to 1 always all right so what we're going to do is at each frame at each frame we're gonna move by d prime times x. So I'm gonna write it down, just gonna give it a little bit of space at each frame. We move d prime times x. So x is exactly how am I supposed to vary d prime in order to make a limited amount of steps to get to b? But that's not the only rule. I need to get to b in t seconds. Okay, so maybe if x is you know less than one, d prime is gonna be something like this. If x is bigger than one, d prime kind of look like this. All right. If x is equal to 1, d prime is exactly d prime, all right? Because I'm multiplying x by d prime, all right? So what is happening that is that at each frame, I'm going to give a tiny step. And this tiny step is given by d prime times x. So let's say that this is d prime times x. So this is one frame. I'm going to give one more step. This is another frame. I'm going to give another step, this is another frame, this is another frame, and this is another frame, and then I'm going to give my final step. Of course this is not right, because if I did it correctly, the last frame should match exactly this final position. So this is just a, a drawing error, okay? And at each frame we're going to update the position of maybe an object that's first at A, and want to reach B, right? So at each frame we're going to update this object's position to match d prime times x, okay? So this is it for this lecture. We're going to put it to practice. In the next lecture, we're going to learn how to do this inside Unity and how we 
how we understand this inside Unity, just using basic sta statements and uh, functions that we already know from the last section. All right. So this is it for this lecture. I see you in the next one.